Right, welcome back. Good to see a very nice uh, full room. If you are in, come and sit down, please, and we'll get excited for the next session. Let uh, me remind you that at uh, half past three this afternoon, we have our closing session. And in that session, we will, of course, reveal where we're going to be next year. This is always much anticipated and uh, exciting. Even I don't know where we're going to be next year. Peter Neagle, the general manager, will not tell me. I've tried briming him with as many as 10 crone, and it doesn't seem to work. Uh, so 3.30 uh, this afternoon, please make sure you're here in this room for the grand finale, and we'll announce where we're going to be in 2023. And it's going to be March 2023, but all the details at half past three this afternoon. Now, we've heard a lot about Spotify throughout the last two days, and now a lot more about Spotify with the guy who is probably the greatest expert, James Cridland. James. Thank you very much. And Johan, come on too. Uh, it's, uh, we've got a full room as well, which is fantastic. And there will be time for questions as well. So if you want to ask questions, be at the front. Don't hide at the back. That would be a good, uh, a good thing. Um, really excited to uh, be able to sit down and, uh, and uh, have a chat. We had a chat last uh, a couple of weeks ago from uh, my home office in Brisbane. And yep. there you were in uh, Sweden, and you then surprised me by releasing the Swedish podcast report, which had a bunch of uh, more uh, data and information. Uh, Johan Siederfors from um, Spotify. Let me just firstly ask you, you're the Nordic head of content at Spotify. Yep. S what does that do? Uh, it basically means that I oversee both the sort of emerging podcast business that we've been uh, running since 2018, uh, as well as, as the music side of things, which is obviously the core of what we've been doing since, since the start. Uh, so I would say the music side is, is basically more relation building, um, label partners, artists, management, producers and stuff like that, uh, while the podcast industry is still ever-changing. Um, it's been uh, uh, an adventure from the beginning, basically, both growing as a platform, but also engaging with um, talent and production companies and such. And, and so you're looking after both music and podcasts. Yeah. Is, that, uh, is that what happens in Spotify in most territories, or are you relatively unusual in terms of that? Uh, I think I'm the only one who actually carries that title specifically. I think it makes a lot of sense though for, for a smaller market like, or region like the Nordics to, to combine the two, uh, both from sort of a platform position perspective, but also from a talent relations perspective, because I think the way the podcast industry is moving, we're viewing podcast talents more and more as artists with the same needs and same type of uh, uh, well, well, needs really from, from our end. So uh, I'm not sure if any other regions and markets will follow and, and implement this role, but I think for us in the Nordics, it, it makes a lot of sense. Well, let's start talking about music, because I guess there are a lot of music radio programmers here. And I wonder, what, what, what's your advice? Should, should we all be reskilling? Should we all be learning how to flip burgers at M McDonald's? Is, is music radio <laughs> doomed, Johan? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, obviously, with streaming, and maybe especially in the Nordics, but, but uh, as, as streaming is growing, it's, it's becoming a new uh, landscape from both a producer perspective and a, and a user perspective, but it's not going as fast as, as some people have predicted, uh, but it is happening, so I think everyone has to sort of adjust, as do we, uh, with the changing times. So mm. I think there's a lot of room for, for everyone, really, but I do think that the sort of putting, putting the listener and the user in the first room is, is really what it's all about. Making sure that you know your audience and that you cater to them in a way that they want to be approached. Or at least that's the way we've been thinking about it for a while, so. Do you listen to the radio at all? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I still do when I drive. Uh, and, uh, but it's becoming more in specific situations. It's less mm. sort of, um, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm getting older as well. So, so for me, that's sort of a natural behavior still. But I'm, uh, compared to my kids, for example, they don't really have that behavior where they, uh, where they turn on the radio. Uh, even though maybe over the last six months, uh, it's becoming more, more of a thing for them as well with sort of with different types of crisis and, uh, mm. 
and uh, relevant news that they want to take part of as well. So, yeah. I, I'm just sort of curious whether you see there being room for only one in the future. Do you, do you see Spotify's in competition with radio, particularly music radio, or do, do you see there being, uh, you know, or, or do you see yourself as being an accompaniment to radio as well? I, I think we are a complement to radio, but the, the mission is obviously to be the, the biggest audio platform in the world, and that's what we're striving for. And mm. I think, uh, going back to the point of streaming, it's not really what anyone wants anymore, it's what the users are doing. So, so if more people are choosing to listen to audio through Spotify, then that's the direction we're going in. But there's tons of competition, both old and new, which we're mm. seeing. So I think uh, from a radio perspective, maybe it's not really radio versus Spotify. It's more how broadcasting is approaching streaming and, and what we can do together. Uh, well, uh, let's ask about that, because what are the opportunities? I've seen some radio stations um, putting curated playlists um, up. Of course, there's podcasts, which we'll jump onto later. Mm -hmm. And there's the Spotify Live app, which uh, potentially is an opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. How should, in your view, how should radio stations be using Spotify? Uh, that, that, I mean, that is a tough question. I think we, probably as a compliment as well. And I think Spotify is really good at a couple of things, but building, building your brand on Spotify and engaging with your audience on Spotify is, is one way of, of looking at it. And, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's hard to, to move people from Spotify to your radio station, so I don't think that's prob that probably shouldn't be your first uh, course of action. But looking at it as a complement and maybe trying to expand a bit outside of, of uh, the previous sort of radio world and becoming more of a brand and, and be more relevant to the audience you're looking for. But I think, I mean, it, it, to me, it goes back to, to what broadcasting, the whole model was sort of built on uh, having people sitting uh, and sort of went, waiting to be fed music or, or other types of content, more or less, while streaming is always the choice of the listener, the choosing what to listen to. So packaging your content and, and music in this case through playlists or, or other uh, means is, is one way for broadcasting or for radio stations to use Spotify, I think. Is you're also doing things in terms of video uh, as well now. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of podcasts now have video accompaniment, and you're, you've made that available to anybody who uses the Anchor uh, platform. Mm -hmm. w what should we be doing in terms of video? What are you looking for in terms of great video uh, uh, content? Is that a focus of yours uh, at the moment? It is because it's important to the younger demographics. It's, it's very heavily skewed to the 18 to 22-year-olds so far, and maybe even younger, uh, down to 13-year-olds, liking to watch video while they're consuming audio. Mm. So we see video as a layer, as a complement to the audio, more than uh, the video experience itself, if that makes sense. So I think if you're watching, we have a feature called Canvas, for example. So it's a, like an eight second loop that plays in the background while you're listening to the song, which adds something to the experience. And I think that's sort of a first step but it's going to look more like that than actual old school music videos. And I think video for podcasts is the same way. It's nice for so far the younger audience to have something to look at while they're listening. And then when they put their phones in their pockets, they can still keep listening to the podcast. But when they're in sort of sit down mode or uh, commuting, uh, then it's a nice option to have. Yeah, something for the eyes as well yeah. as for the ears. It's yeah. the way that I've been heard, uh, it's the way that I've heard it being talked about earlier. You, you promote things as well, obviously, in the app. When you go into the Spotify app, um, I, uh, I think there's some experiments going on, as I'm sure that there are always experiments in terms of switching music and podcasts as separate things. Mm -hmm. But at, mo at the moment, they're all together uh, in there. What, what's the way of getting promotion in the app? How does promotion um, uh, work there? How do you choose? who is going to appear in that particular uh, spot. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's so far ever changing, and it's not like there's uh, going to be one way for us of doing this, but so far we do have content editors, uh, and their job is basically to 
introduce content to audiences that they think might be interested in, in that specific piece of content. So if it's a, a specific playlist, if you're looking at it from the music side, then we're trying to put that in front of an audience that we think will appreciate it. And podcast is basically the same. Um, trying to program the surfaces you see on Spotify with content that you might be interested in. But I think we're going to see a lot more personalization, a lot more fitted content for you mm. as you're telling us what you like to listen to without ruining sort of the element of surprise, which should always be there, right? You want to be surprised and you want to be able to learn something new about yourself. And, and if we just feed you what you previously liked, then your experience is going to be less fun and exciting. So I think uh, that's going to be the challenge, really, to, to find that balance. Yeah, so I, I, I suppose the big difference from a broadcast world is obviously we're trying to broadcast to everybody. Yeah. We're trying to reach as many possible people as we can. Mm -hmm. Whereas in terms of the Spotify experience, very much more algorithmically driven to particular target audiences. Yeah, it's a mix. Uh, there's an algorithm uh, part to it. There's a human part to it, which we feel is really important, having that human touch, so to speak, in, in recommending and, and to drive discovery in a, in a more um, uh, natural way, I guess. Uh, but there is also a mix, uh, especially on the, on the music side, where certain playlists are, are in fact, a mix of, of uh, human creation with an algorithm touch. Uh, so, yeah, it looks... Uh, it can look, in a, it can look uh, different depending on the purpose. What are the... Um one of the questions I've, I've been, you know, talking to many people outside and saying, what should I be asking you? <laughs> and one of the questions was just a really simple one of, have you guys not heard of a segue where you take one song and you merge it into another song and you merge it into another song? Why can't you do that on Spotify? You can. So that, so that uh, you can do that on That's Spotify, can it? Yeah. Yeah? Um, but I mean, a proper... A proper segue, not, yeah, like not, a just, not, just, uh, not just fading it over. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's something that radio has been doing for a long time, and it's just a curious thing that there, there, aren't, there don't appear to be any music streaming platforms that have worked out that actually one song fading all the way down to silence, then another song starting is not necessarily the... Um, no, I, I, I actually don't know why that's the case, but the fact is that you can put the fade function in if you want to sort of merge the songs yourself and not get that interruption. But yeah, yeah I mean, we do have specifically DJ mixes, for example, that sort of goes into that territory, but those are made for, for that purpose. So, yeah, uh, indeed, yeah. indeed. Well, we'll have questions from the audience, plenty of those, um, which I'm looking forward to taking. Firstly, let's just talk about podcasting, yeah. uh, something very close to uh, my heart. You released the Swedish podcast report last week, which had lots of interesting numbers in it. Two-thirds of 18 to 29-year-olds in Sweden listen to podcasts at least once a week. Mm -hmm. That's a tremendous figure. Um, why do you think that is? Why do you think that podcasts are so interesting, particularly to younger audiences in this country? I think that for us, I think the, this has, really has uh, regional significance. The fact that Spotify is so dominant in the market here, both in Sweden and in the Nordics as a whole, mm. makes it easier for us to introduce new types of content. So when podcast was introduced, we saw an explosion in, in the conversion from music listening to podcast listening, mm. but also the latter, as new podcast listeners came onto the service, which weren't necessarily as interested in music as uh, the ones who were already there, they also tended to start listening to music. So it became sort of a a win-win situation where we could introduce podcasts faster to a younger audience on Spotify, uh, but also make the new podcast listeners more interested in music. Well, so, so what's the overlap there? Are there lots of people who listen to both? Are there yeah. lots of people who only listen to one or the other, one, one music and, and podcasts? I would say, I don't have a specific number, but I would say, in, especially in, in the younger demographic that you mm -hmm. mentioned, it's, it's, it's got to be close to 100%. Uh, that listen to both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. That's really interesting because, as you say, Spotify is massive here. Uh, according to Spotify, 60% of Swedes listen to podcasts on Spotify. 
Uh, the next platform is SR Play from Swedish Radio with half the audience. Mm -hmm. And Apple Podcasts has only a third of the audience, just 20%. Why is Spotify so large here? Is it first mover advantage? Is it because it's a, a, a company from this part of the world? What, what, what's the reason for that? Uh, I think first mover advantage definitely plays in. But I also think that Spotify is built for a user experience that most people like. It's really easy to use. It's super simplistic in, in finding content to start listening to. And those things matter to most people. Like mm. if you. If you go back to where Spotify started, it was basically a database where you had to know what you were looking for, basically. You had to put something in the search uh, uh, thingy, and, and then yes. you found your music, and, and yes. uh, you got going. But nowadays, it's more uh, content being sort of suggested to you. And mm -hmm. as podcast uh, was introduced on the service, that played a very big part. And I think uh, that combination of, of having such a big part of the population on Spotify and already using it on a daily basis made it very sort of easy but also convenient to, to present podcast uh, content. And, and as we all know, the younger demographic tends to be a little bit faster, so they listen more, more often and, and sort of longer sessions as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so what, yeah. what, what sort of content works on uh, Spotify from a podcast point of view? We, we read a lot about true crime. Yeah. We read a lot about comedy, and m much of comedy's success is because Joe Rogan is a apparently a comedy podcast. <laughs> um, I've listened. I'm not sure it is, but nevertheless, that's what they say. Um, so, but but what are you seeing working? What's the type of content that is working well for you in this uh, in this market? Yeah, uh, I get this question a lot about what the next trend is in in podcasting. Sorry. Uh, and and uh, I think t to me the, like the biggest trend is is the growth of the podcast audience. But looking specifically mm. at content, it's I don't want to say unfortunately, but it it's still documentary storytelling and and conversation podcast that drives the the majority of the listening hours for us as well. Mm. Uh, as we heard yesterday, we're experimenting in scripted. Uh, we think there's a future there where different type of scripted content can, can play a bigger role for, for a bigger audience going forward. Um, but I think, I mean, it, it's so easy to, to talk about podcast from a sort of a theme perspective or, or uh, a celebrity perspective, but to me, it's much more personal and intimate than that. I think it, it like podcast to me has everything to do with the tonality and, and the way the the person talking is connecting with the listener. Mm. And and when you keep that in mind, the theme doesn't really matter as much. I'm not saying it's insignificant, but it really it's about that connection between the listener and and uh, and the host. And I think when you get to that point. That's, what, that's really what makes podcasts special, because then you can start with a niche audience, and, and if you can find your first 100 people who cares, or 1,000 people that cares, and they care enough to, to talk about it, then that's when you get the effect, and that's how you grow your, your audience. I think everyone knows that podcast is a word-of-mouth medium, and, and that's really what we're looking for, is, is content that's sticky enough and, and engaging enough to make people care to talk about it and really recommend it further. Uh, and that's a much more efficient way for us to, to build a podcast than, than try to advertise it or, or even recommending it on the service, service, which is sort of the second most impactful uh, way to, to sort of broaden a podcast. And I think that that's something that we in radio have always been talking about in terms of, you know, it's a very intimate medium. You have a great relationship with the radio host. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we all have wonderful stories of, of how our li listeners have gone above, uh, above and beyond just for, for this voice on the end yeah. of, the, of the radio. It's one of the things that I was most taken with when I looked at, there are figures out of the UK um, saying that Around about 50% of people listen to the radio alone, mm -hmm. but 92% of people listen to podcasts alone. And I'm guessing for Spotify, that's probably true of the entire platform, isn't it? It's, a, it's, it's very much a personal thing, not really a listening with family thing. Would that be right? Or I think that's absolutely true. And I think, I mean, you can look 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that that's definitely true, but it, it is a sharing experience in that you really want to talk about what you listen to, so you share it sort of afterwards. It's not a joint mm -hmm. listening experience, but it is content that you want to talk to somebody about. And, and uh, the easiest way for us to see that is, is usually in, in social media, where groups or, or um, uh, handles connected to the show is really where the conversation is happening. Mm. Um, and and, and um, that tends to be really powerful. But you're right, it is it's something that you do by yourself. Now, anybody can get a podcast into Spotify. So, theoretically, any radio station here can submit their podcast into, into Spotify and they will appear. Mm -hmm. But you also commission your own podcasts too. What sort of companies make those shows for you? What sort of companies are, the, uh, are, are you, you getting those shows made by? Uh, that varies a lot, actually, and it's been shifting over the years as well. It sounds like we've been doing this forever, but it's only been since, since 2018. But it's uh, anyone from, from individual creators coming up with an idea that we feel fills uh, a hole in, in the market where we want to have a presence and where we think there's a future to grow and and have a voice that's important for that potential audience mm. to bigger production companies uh, producing stuff for Swedish radio or other radio stations as well. So it's, it's uh, I think the trend though is that the audience is expecting a lot more uh, professional style production. So we care a lot more about the audio sound and the soundscaping and the, yeah. and the audio storytelling really. And are you working with a lot of broadcasters doing that? Uh, I mean, uh, do some of the large radio stations produce uh, podcasts specifically for you that you commission? We haven't yet, no. But we're not against it. It just hasn't happened yet. Yeah. So, so that's interesting. So is there a sort of, is there a pitching process? How does that bit work? Uh, yeah, uh, we do. I'm not really sure how it works in other markets, but we do have a pretty worked out pitching process where we sort of go out and tell the market what we're looking for and, and sort of how we view the, the current landscape and, and mm. sort of themes and audiences that we want to approach. And then it's basically open to everyone to, to come in and pitch ideas for, for those 12 to 15 shows that we produce per year. So it's not like we're doing... I think that's an important distinction, that we're not Netflix in the way we're, that we're producing pretty much all our own content. We're, fairly, we're a fairly small content producer compared to how many podcasts yeah. there are on Spotify. You do some exclusives for podcasts. Mm -hmm. You don't for music. No. Um, I think you used to for music. Where, where, where's the strategy moved there? I think the strategy for music was always that it shouldn't be exclusive. Uh, we saw other streaming platforms sort of launching as, w with the exclusivity as, as their uh, unique selling point. But for us, the way, at least the way Daniel Ek has been talking about it, he's always been very clear that music should be uh, the same on all platforms, and then you compete with, mm -hmm. with uh, by, be, by being the most uh, appealing platform to the audience, uh, while podcast mirrors more the TV streaming side of things where you can compete with having uh, the best uh, catalog or the perception of having the best catalog. So that's the role of our own uh, produced and exclusive shows. Yeah, and so uh, it, it's very much a sort of a, a, a specific choice around the podcasting side um, to have exclusives there mm -hmm. to pull people onto the platform. Is that, is that, is that essentially yeah. why that's there for? Yeah. yeah. And to be really frank, it's, it's the, pretty much the only way to make anyone sh switch or change their podcast player. So if you're on one of the competing platforms today or you use their app to listen to podcasts, it's, they're, you're usually very reluctant to move over to start listening to Spotify unless there is a specific show that you really want to follow. So that's, a, that's sort of a main purpose of, of using mm. exclusivity as, as, a, as an offer. Let me just ask you about uh, genres and uh, the types of podcasts that you're seeing. Uh, we, there was a big podcast summit here a couple of days ago. We were hearing, um, you know, sort of tired resignation about true crime. It'll still, still be a big podcast thing. It seems to be particularly uh, interesting to uh, women, uh, particularly interesting to younger women particularly. Um, 
What are you doing in the scripted space? Uh, I know that you've done some work around fiction uh, mm -hmm. uh, there. How, how, how has that gone for you? Uh, it was an extremely interesting experiment, I would say. It's, it's a really... Because you worked with a, a movie producer, didn't you, to yeah. produce something? Yeah, and, and if you listen to, to Corinne here and her colleagues yesterday, they, they talked about The Free, which was the project that that was uh, two years in the making, really the way Netflix or HBO would approach a, 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 like a TV drama show. So it was a very, very interesting way of trying to really get that audio experience out and see what we can do with audio storytelling in a, in a scripted drama type of way. Uh, having actors basically moving around in character, uh, not being in a studio, but really be out there to, to sort of read their lines and, and in, engage with each other, and, and having that award-winning director going 100% into the project and, and getting the best out of the actors to really get the story uh, to mm -hmm. life. Uh, and we're immensely proud of it. And unfortunately, not something we can do uh, every year, probably, until uh, yeah. the audience catches on. But it was, a, it was an amazing experience and, and something that we look forward to doing again. But apart from those type of massive productions, we're also doing smaller uh, scripted shows, uh, 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 sort of more in the sitcom space, where you have shorter episodes with an ensemble who sort of acts out episodes and you can follow them as you would a, a TV show. And, and uh, those are really proven to be interesting to specifically younger audiences as well. So we're gonna probably continue with that. We're looking at uh, adapting uh, literature into podcast experiences, mm -hmm. uh, other than like going from audiobooks to a more immersive experience probably. Uh, we've been uh, trying that out for, uh, for two or three projects now. Um, so there are definitely new ways of, of sort of evolving podcast into becoming new ways of telling stories. And I think that's probably ultimately what our local goal is, is to sort of challenge the status quo of sort of what the old way of looking at podcast was to, to try to expand the storytelling and really get more voices uh, heard and more stories told and, and making sure that the podcast industry as it evolves isn't becoming like the unbalanced music industry or TV industry or movie industry, uh, which mm. is run and controlled by quite a few people. But we want this to be a, like an open experience where everyone's welcome and, and have an opportunity to be heard. Yeah, and I think, you know, anyone can get any, any yeah. of their content into uh, Spotify, which yeah. I think is a... You know, it's, it's a very different world to the world of um, streaming video and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, Spotify pays musicians. Spotify doesn't pay podcasters. How long is that going to happen for <laughs> do you? I mean, do you, do you see that long term continuing to be the case? Uh, it's tricky when you compare, compare them as, as equal. Because if you would pay podcasters the same way we pay well, first of all, we don't pay artists, we pay rights holders, right? So Spotify pays out, uh, last year we paid out $7 billion, I think, to the music industry, right holders who then pays their artists, depending on what type of deal they have. While on the podcast side, uh, the business model looks like, uh, where it, it, it's more like Spotify is the platform and, and you control mm. your own podcast when you produce it and, and publish it on Spotify. So you can commercialize your podcast any way you want, really, if you want ads or if you want sponsorships or partnerships or, or no ads at all, if you think that makes for a better listening experience and if you want to build something else out of it. But that's sort of the main difference, because if we would pay podcasters as, we, as we're paying out to music rights holders, they would be paid a lot less, basically, because mm -hmm. a podcast session is usually around 30 to 45 minutes. and. Uh, uh, that's yeah. uh, that maybe one or two shows. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. that's different than a two-minute pop song. One, one or one or two shows, or a or a fifth of a Joe Rogan show. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I'm just sort of curious where you are in terms of cars as well. In the U.S., you've launched Car Thing, which is a little thing that you stick on your dashboard. 
Um, maybe because lots of people in the US don't have better cars, um, which already have Spotify built in. Um, you're working on daily drive playlists as well. Do you see the car as being the next, you know, we in radio are quite attached to, to the car. Yeah. Um, do you see cars as being a real opportunity for you? I think we're looking more, uh, maybe the US is focusing more specifically on the car. I think we're looking more at commuting in general, depending on how you move from back and forth from school or, or from work. That could be hmm. uh, walking or, or taking a train or a bus or, or whatever, but really making sure that that experience becomes more personalized and, and easy to use where you don't have to sort of touch your phone every time you want to change a song or, or listen to, to talk content, for example. So daily commute, as you, as you referenced, is a way for us to build a longer experience which is personalized and built after mm -hmm. your listening habits, really. So you might get a new segment, you might get three songs that you've told us that you like, and then you might get the local weather or something similar. And, and I mm -hmm. think we're moving more in that direction. So if you're in a car, you're going to listen to it there, but if you're on a train or a bus, then you're going to have pretty much the same experience, but uh, personalized for, for your commuting. And, and presumably opportunities there for broadcasters in terms of helping you with those uh, with that news, yeah. with the sports information, exactly. with, the, with the, the, the weather and all of that kind yeah. of stuff as well, um, which is uh, interesting. Look, let's um, open this up to uh, questions. I'm sure there are tons of uh, questions. We have uh, a roaming mic or two. I will put your hand up and uh, see if there are any questions. I mean, if there are any questions, then we can finish and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll just go. Um, but I'm sure that there are some uh, questions, so stick your hand up if you've got something uh, to ask. Uh, that would be a lovely thing. Go on, don't be shy. There's a question, there's a question over here um, in uh, the uh, second row. If you want to tell us your name just so that we know who to blame for later, then that would be uh, fantastic too. Hi, I'm Ella from News UK, so representing a few brands. Um, I'm wondering in terms of podcast promotion, um, how broadcasters that are producing independent content rather than Spotify exclusives and so on. Um, is there more of a priority, obviously, for Spotify content? Um, how can more external production companies be getting the promotion within Spotify? Because I find um, usually there's quite common collections and things like that. I think that's one of the things that we need to work on a lot more and, and become a better partner to independent producers, for example. I think that should... On the music side of things, we've been working on that for a lot longer, and on the podcast side, it's, it's there, but it's not really working yet. But I think if we want to be the best platform and, and the best partner to independent producers and production companies, this is one of the areas we really need to improve. One of the things that we're pretty good at is, is connecting the right content with, with the potential audience, and I think uh, that's obviously what most of like everyone is looking for, to, to sort of grow your audience. and. And, and be introduced in the right, uh, in the right way. And, and uh, uh, we do have content editors doing that job right now, but not working, I think, as closely to, to uh, companies like yours, for example. And, uh, but we'll see a, a lot more of that going forward, for sure. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I, I know that Spotify in the US have been publishing, they've published three things recently about the people behind the, the recommendations in the app, how to get you know, good podcast recommendations uh, uh, into the app as well. Mm -hmm. Easy for the US because it's such a large market. How, how, do you, how would you even approach um, doing that in, for, for your European partners? Uh, because you've got so many of them. Yeah, you, I think you really have to do it locally. Uh, mm -hmm. Podcasts, as you all know, is such a local industry and, and a local market. We are seeing a little bit of a shift where, where English-speaking content is sort of seeping into the top 100 uh, podcast chart, even, even here in the Nordics. So, and that's sort of a change in itself. But having that local competence, I think the main thing is to understand that the purpose of the editor is to make the listening experience better. So we want people to find your content and then they can choose if it's good enough, enough or interesting enough to keep listening to. But that's sort of the purpose of the editor, is to make sure that your content gets heard. Uh, so we're, we're really trying hard not to um, 
get stuck in, in questions of biases or, or personal taste or preference. That doesn't really matter at all. It's really about identifying the, uh, the podcast or playlist uh, and then finding the right audience for it because we want different uh, audiences to have, the, uh, like have an equally good experience. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where is that roaming microphone? Is there a question with that roaming microphone? Because there's a question up here, and there's a question down there as well. Fantastic. Let's do the question right at the back. Um, and we will find out. It really is right at the back. How far up is that roaming microphone going? <laughs> there's a Hello. question. Hello. Hi. I'm uh, Anders from the Danish Broadcasting Corporation. Um, you're doing exclusive content, um, Joe Rogan, for instance. You're doing uh, exclusive content in uh, Sweden. Are you going to do exclusive content in all languages um, uh, going forward? Uh, I want to say yes. Uh, speaking only for myself, I would love to do it in Denmark, for example, and, and Norway as well, but we're not quite there yet. I think this is... Uh, probably evidence of uh, that the podcast industry is still moving and still evolving. Uh, it, it seems to make a lot of sense for Spotify. We, when we've tried it in Sweden, we've, we've seen really good results. So it wouldn't be uh, surprising if we would uh, eventually move into to other markets as well. I think if I'm right, I think we're doing original content in 17 markets right now around the world, and we're active in... 184 markets, so there's quite a bit, quite a bit to go. Yeah. But uh, I think if we want to keep growing our podcast business, I think that's probably where we need to go. Yes. What What are the content differences between the Nordic countries? Are, are Swedish people massively different to Danish people uh, in terms of the consumption? Not really. Uh, Sweden is a little bit ahead, uh, but I think that's first mover advantage and, and having mm -hmm. been around in Sweden for a little bit longer, but also uh, that we have had the opportunity to do original and exclusive content here, and, and that matters to the audience. We've seen that clearly. But do you see more, more you know, true crime listening in Finland than you do in Norway? It looks fairly similar. Right. And, and, and uh, true crime or documentary storytelling and conversation style podcast is really the driver in, in all markets. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in terms of music, is there, is there a massive change there? I mean, I'm imagining that Finland is just going to be all, you know, heavy death rock. Uh, no, but you're right that Finland stands out. Finland yeah. is, uh, and we actually have a, a previous editor here working for radio now, Jussi, sitting back there. He could tell you about the Finnish music industry. <laughs> and, and, uh, but Finland is, is much more focused on local music, and uh, it's really, it stands out in the Nordics specifically. So we do see a lot of uh, uh, local sort of nuances in, in the music scene in different countries. France, obviously, very focused on local music as well and, and uh, local content in general. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, no, interesting. There's a, there, there's a question just at the front uh, here. Um, here we are. Hey, uh, Ola Sakerson from Swedish Radio. Um, you were talking a little bit about uh, current affairs now around the pandemic and the war. How, how much do you see that that kind of content engages on your platform? Uh, well, we've seen it clearly now during the, the, the time of crisis that, that podcasts with those type of topics do get a lot, lot more attention, a lot more, more listening. Uh, as I would imagine that radio does as well, when, when stuff happens that, that people care about or want to find out more about, they, they, seem, they usually turn to, to sources they trust, and public broadcasting is, is uh, usually probably the, the most, uh, uh, well, the front runner, obviously, but we see that clearly on Spotify as well, on the, on the platform, that uh, content that's relevant for whatever reason, and right now it, it happens to be more tragic uh, events that, that draws the audience to, to uh, COVID-related podcasts or, or news podcasts who helps people understand what's happening in the world in, in regards to, to the Ukraine situation, uh, definitely. Um, but it, it goes in, in, in uh, it goes up and down as, as sort of society shifts as well. Is that an area where you would uh, produce more exclusives uh, from your own side? 
it's it's hard to to predict because it's uh, it, it sort of uh, it follows the the news cycle and obviously production takes time. But but looking at content that that helps people understand the world they're living in, I think that's sort of what we do already. Uh, that said, I, I I'm not seeing us producing specific news shows, for example. Um, mm anytime soon but i'm not i'm not saying we won't but it's it's not something we're looking at if you if if you were to um if you were to look at something around news would you be interested in working a, in a co-production with a public service broadcaster is that is that sort of something that you would do or is that something which is a bit sort of weird and strange uh, uh, no, we're not against that at all. It doesn't have to be a public broadcaster either. It could be yeah. so any or any type of partner. And, of and I think we are going to have a couple of uh, initiatives going forward, where where much like uh, the daily commute type of experience, we want to partner up with with mm. producers who can who can uh, help audiences uh, fill their day with with the content that they want for specific times. Uh, so absolutely. Mm. We've got five, five minutes left. I know that there's a question over here. I'm just wondering if there's a question at the back as well. I can see there's a question there as well. Should we go to you first, sir, and then we'll, we'll jump over uh, here. You. I hope Hello. it's a sir. Uh, <laughs> Francis it Goffin from uh, maradio.ba. We are a, a French-speaking Belgian organization, a broadcaster organization. Mm. Uh, some years ago, I attended uh, an ABU uh, radio assembly and there was a session dedicated to Spotify. And during the Q&A, we were discussing about the potential uh, competition between Spotify and broadcasters. And I asked uh, one of your colleagues at that time, will, you, will Spotify one day deliver talk content? And he said on the stage, never. We are only <laughs> focused on music. So my question, my question is, how can the broadcaster trust you that in the future you will not continue to compete more and more with our industry? <laughs> How dare you not be able to work out what the future is? <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a actually a very good question. I think one thing I learned, uh, I'm coming up on five years at Spotify now, and, and uh, I think one of the most important learnings is to never say never. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, I would never have said that in, to begin with, and I think uh, the way we look at it, or the way I look at it, I should say, being on stage here today, is that we're in competition with everything, really, that takes time from, from anyone during the day. That could be, like, HBO probably views Spotify as a competition, as YouTube would, or public broadcasters, or radio stations. Mm. So I think like we're all in competitions for time and attention, and uh, that's where we want to excel. So I would say that uh, the users are, are showing us right now that they like to listen to audio on Spotify, and I think that's a hard uh, trend to, to, uh, to try to break, because it's really not really what I want. It's more like what, what the users and listeners want. So it's, um, th that is a tricky development. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I, w I would never have said never. <laughs> I wonder whether there's uh, something in terms of Spotify Live using for radio stations to use to use that, and maybe to broadcast some some radio on that. Would that be something that you'd be open to, or, or is that? Never. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's uh, ah, next week then. <laughs> I think that's probably uh, something that we will uh, try to make happen. Uh, try to 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 make that available at some point, uh, but maybe not to mirror sort of the old experience in in yeah. in moving broadcast to a streaming platform, but more. Uh, as a way to find an audience and engage an audience, and and if we want to be a good partner to to uh, the industry, we need to to make mm. sure that not only that that you can sort of uh, get your content out on Spotify, but also that you can build a meaningful relationship with the listener. So, yeah. um, uh, yeah. just one last one last question. Um, I think it was uh, Will over over there. If there's a microphone. Uh, for him, was there a question over there? There wasn't a question over there, in which case, I've got one more question for you. Sure. What, what is the future? In five years' time, and I know five years is a long way in the future, but in five years, where do you see 
Spotify and broadcast radio? Do you see, um, well, let me not put words in your mouth. That is let, a, me, let me ask you the question. Uh, thank <laughs> you for saving that for last. <laughs> It's a very tough question. I think uh, audio, uh, answering the first part of the question first, I think audio is going to be high, more ha highly valued in general. I think the, the saying that, that uh, Daniel had a few years back, that, that video is valued 10 times higher than audio, will have evened out a little bit. I think we see a lot of space in, in the days of, of our average user where they can listen to more audio. And I, we obviously think that they will use Spotify to, to fill that space. And hopefully, we will have broadened the, the content offer so that they can uh, listen to more audio dramas and, and different types of, of shows, uh, news, and, and stuff like that uh, at different times of the day. I think in terms of, of how Spotify and public broadcasters can, can sort of coexist, that is going to be something to, to be talked about for sure. I think public service and public broadcasters play an immensely important role in, in society in, in keeping the, the population informed and, and, and sort of safe with, with trusted information. So we need to make sure that 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 doesn't sort of go away or, or become d diminished in any way. So, but it, it's really hard to say what that's going to look like in five years. But I think just looking at how far we've gone f from five years ago, I think we can safely say that it's not going to look like it does today. Well, time is up for us. I don't think we have a binary future, personally. I don't think there is a future of either Spotify or radio. Just as radio's future is multi-platform, I think Spotify and radio both have uh, a place. And on that, let's leave that. Jo uh, Johan uh, Siedefors from Spotify, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, James, Johan, thank you very much. Time for lunch. Uh, back here at quarter to two. Uh, in this room, it's going to be Tom Webster with some research data details. Thank you. Then we've got our fun. famous uh, 30 ideas session all coming together. And at 3.30, we reveal where we're going to be in 2023. Enjoy your lunch. Oh. Hi, we're Pure Jingles. We create with pure love for radio and make you stand out through groundbreaking imaging. For all your needs, there's a fit. We compose and produce brand new jingles, experimentally, individually, lovingly, and driven by lots of coffee. We want to go one step ahead and build relationships that are, like radio, timeless. Pure Jingles creates jingles, sounds, and visuals for radio. Start creating your new sound at purejingles.com.